throw it back this way and see if we can't catch it around here so we don't hit that snowbank. Yes, that's what we want to be able to do and match our lines on the way out. Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're gonna to take the E92 M3 out in the snow. We've got some sleet coming down, you can hear it. Ah, oh, that's the good stuff. Which means we've got some slippery roads out there to play with. We have not snow blown the driveway, so we're gonna have a good time getting out. And then I wanna talk about how I learned to drive in the snow and how that really impacted my car control over the years. But I learned at a really young age, but more importantly, let's just get this out of the driveway and go have some fun because it's maybe the last storm of 2022. We always get one of these kind of late season snowstorms. And sorry guys, no Adidas Sambas today. We got the bean boots. Is that ubiquitous? If, if I say bean boots, does everyone know what I'm talking about? Or is that just like a New England thing where everybody has LL Bean? Get those headlights on. Oh, it's a good idea. People forget to do that, but let's see if we can get out of the driveway. <laughs> okay, we are already in a struggle. <laughs> This is where a manual actually would help a lot because then I could rock the car a little bit. Looking forward to that again. And there we go. This is literally ideal. I'm keeping the revs down because we are not totally warm yet. So here's the thing. I learned how to drive sideways. I learned rear wheel drive car control at a young age because my parents were a little crazy and they let me play with the car. Now, I know not everybody has that ability. I don't even actually understand why my parents let me do this because they don't seem like those people. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, man, they really loved me and knew I was a weird kid because they knew I wasn't doing what the normal kids were doing. And the only way to make me happy was to toss me the keys to a rear wheel drive Volvo station wagon, I guess. But the reason we had this like extra car, we had a 1989 Volvo 740 wagon rear wheel drive my dad put a limited slip differential in it so it was a pretty slick little thing to play with thank you um and he had basically worn the car out but like many of you he didn't want to sell it he was like nope we're gonna keep it for a bit so we just had this extra car sitting in the driveway and during snowstorms like this my parents would be like go out and shovel the driveway if my dad didn't want to snow blow and they didn't trust me with a snow blower uh, but what I would do is I would go jump start this Volvo and then I would just go drive up and down the driveway but that's when I found out that if I tossed it a little to the side ooh, now we can go sideways and I was like wow I can drive this car sideways I can counter steer I can catch it I didn't really know what drifting was at the time but I knew that I was doing something pretty exciting and that's where it all came from because I learned like naturally like wait a minute this car will go sideways under these conditions and I found that to be just the best thing in the world and come to find out that never went away I still find that to be the best thing in the world So I know some people learn to drive and learn their car control by going out to a racetrack or drifting around in, let's say, a dry parking lot. I actually don't advise that. I mean, it's fine if you're good at it, but I mean, the low speed ability to learn how to drive a car sideways and react to things in essentially slow motion is what gave me the confidence to be able to go out and drive more quickly in other conditions, in the wet and in the dry. Because as you amplify the speed, the reaction time has to get faster, right? If you have more grip, it means that when you do end up going sideways, the consequences are much more dire. So to be able to kind of calmly drive around like this, it gives you the, the, the muscle control, the muscle memory of catching your car. And then when it happens quickly, you just react to it immediately. So. If you can drive in the snow and learn how to drive in the snow, this is the way. I mean, honestly, I think this is the way to really learn how to drive a car properly. But just like when you get onto a racetrack, you know, when you're coming out of pit lane, sometimes you want to give a quick brake check and just double check that you've got got functionality I do this in the snow to see like okay like how slippery are we you know we jump in I've got ABS going bonkers 
what do I have for stopping distances? And I, I, I think that's always going to be your number one thing to know. I also don't want to encourage you to just go out and start being a jerk, right? Like you want to have line of sight. So you want to be able to look over that corner and know that there's nobody coming at you in a situation where like, oh, I was just hooning around and playing. You know, don't, don't come around a blind corner sideways. I see this a lot in YouTube videos where people are out uh, in California doing kind of like toge runs up like these beautiful mountain roads, but then they're crossing double yellow sideways and like people do live on those roads. So, uh, you know, the same goes for the snow stuff where someone might be like barreling down this road and they can't stop, right? Like this guy's going to take this left or this right for him. That freaks me out a little bit because I just want to see him bleed off some speed first. I don't want him to understeer that. And like, he's got a Grand Cherokee with a, a winch. I don't want that in my teeth. Sick setup with the snowblower. Very cool. Also, we don't want to be driving sideways near people, even if you feel confident in your abilities. Like, give people some space. Give them the room. They even stopped for me. You know, you don't want to put anybody in a position where just because you're having a little bit of fun, you don't want to go barrel into them. Plus, you look like a total tool if you just crash into that snowbank that they're creating. And uh, yeah, they're probably not going to like you very much. We want to be likable car enthusiasts. That's always a goal. I've gotten stuck a few times too. Like, one time really stuck. I had a 350Z open differential. It was a great snowstorm. I was with my buddy and we decided we're going to go drift around and we were having fun. And then I just bit off a little more than I could chew. And we went down a hill to like a parking lot where a hiking trail starts. Like we've been out there before. The problem was I hadn't really thought ahead of like, can I climb this hill again? And it became very apparent that the snow was a lot deeper than I had anticipated. And you know, this is just slush, nothing worried there. But the snow was much deeper than I anticipated and I could not get back up the hill. And it was nighttime and I didn't have any friends with a plow or a truck. So I actually, for hours, we shoveled and tried to get out of it. And then I put on Facebook, this is when Facebook wasn't like a total embarrassment to have. I put up on Facebook like, hey, I'm stuck in this location, like anybody have a, a, a tow. And this guy that I went to college with, out of nowhere, lived down the street, brought his Wrangler on like 33 inch all-terrain tires, and he, he unstuck me. He pulled me up this hill and it was amazing. And I'll never, I'll never not be appreciative of that. That was like really cool. But you know, always have that foresight of, can I get out of the situation that I'm putting myself in? Because if you can't, then maybe you shouldn't be there. It could be a very cold night alone in your car because you thought, oh, it would be fun to go out snow drifting. So always try to use your head a little bit <laughs> when you do these types of things. <laughs> the number one thing you can do is like learn how to mess up. And then you can start like linking drifts, right? And learn how to like transition with that throttle and bring it back. Like that's what you wanna be able to do. You wanna be able to put out cones essentially and place the car exactly where you want, just like you were playing pool. Like a real pool player isn't just like aiming for the fences and hoping to get into a hole. They're like, oh, I'm gonna put this ball in this hole. Watch me. Like that's what you wanna be able to do with your car. Surface changes are also gonna play a big role in, in how you're driving because like this isn't uniform. I've got sand underneath. I've got snow on top, I've got freezing rain, I've got all kinds of good stuff going on here. And then I've gotta be able to bleed that back, bring it back down to earth, so that way I don't go like flying into some intersection, right? You wanna be able to do that. And we'll straighten it back out so that way this guy isn't gonna be a total mess while I drive by. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we're cool. You don't need rear wheel drive to have fun. Uh, front wheel drive cars can be a lot of fun, except you really do need a handbrake. I don't, I've never, I've, I've never attempted this with one of those new like electronic flappy button things where you're like, ooh, let's engage. I don't trust that because if you're going to be drifting or driving sideways or inducing oversteer in a front wheel drive car, 
you need to be able to hold this button down and pull up and down and pull up and down. And, and, and that's going to give you that control. Number one, like honestly, if you're out in a front wheel drive car, I don't know if I need to be saying this to you, but let's just pretend I just need to give that instruction. Do not let go of the button, hold the button. Because if you need to release quickly, you don't wanna be stuck and you don't wanna be in a panic about like, oh no, I'm, st- I'm stuck with the, the emergency brake on. No, you wanna be able to release that all the time. So if you are out in a front wheel drive car, thumb on button, do not let go. I know I'm in a BMW, you wanna indicate early, early, because you want anyone behind you who maybe doesn't have the braking capability or if they're just texting, because you know it's 2022 and nobody pays attention when they drive. You wanna give people a heads up of what's going on. Always indicate, please. This looks like it's dried out quite a bit. Yeah, see, we've got grip here. That's ah, not great. Let's go find a lower grip environment. The slow climb. This is very slippery, wow. See, this is not what I expected. I actually expected that to be, I expected a little more grip there. The surface of this spot, we have to do some wide drifts to hang onto that. But it's good if you can kind of like link your tire marks so that way you know, and I'm doing a really poor job of that right now. This is a lot more slippery than I thought it was gonna be. There we go, all right, now we're in a rhythm. You just kind of find your rhythm, like this is my throttle position. We're good, we're good, we're good. You wanna make like a nice donut, just a nice circle, right? And that's nice, that's what you want. You wanna be able to carry like a constant radius and just hang on to it for a bit. Feather the throttle, feather the steering, adjust, play with it, see what you like. And then unwind out, and off we go. Give a little show off for the kids. (laughs) I mean, what could be better? What could be better on a snowy day? Over the last like couple months, I've seen comments on my snow videos. This is fun. I've seen comments on my snow videos of people who are like, you know, I totaled my car. See, I got this Durango coming up, like kind of hot. He's not leaving enough distance. That like I just that's not the vibe, man. I'm not feeling it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of your way because I don't really want to deal with you crashing into my car. hang a little ass but so what I don't want to have happen is I don't want people to comment and say like oh I did what you were doing and I crashed my car and like often I think that's just because you're carrying too much speed or you got a little confident in what was going on or you weren't you didn't understand maybe like how little traction we're working with when we do stuff like this and that you've got to have smooth inputs and you've got to have kind of an abort plan, right? Like if you are in a position where you're just sliding away from where you want to be, break, just break, lock them up, just break the car, stop, just stop. Um, And that's what you're even taught on a racetrack. Like if you start to spin, usually they'll just say like two feet in, just lock it up, stop the car. Uh, and, 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 And like if the car is getting that far ahead of you, you don't really have much hope. Don't want to hit the tail on that snowbank. I need to get myself a plow. Maybe I should buy a plow next year just so I can plow for a few months. Like I'll buy it from McGovern, get myself an F-350 or F-250 with a V plow and then sell it back to them like immediately when I'm done. That would probably do the trick. So guys, I hope you enjoyed what might be like the last of the snow driving videos in the M3 because I don't know what the future has in store for this car, nor do I have much trust that there will be any good, you know, snowstorms coming up. We are, 
we are about to get into March and uh, this could be it. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Try to keep it in the lines here because there's not much grip elsewhere. And then we'll throw it back this way and see if we can't catch it around here so we don't hit that snowbank. Yes, that's what we want to be able to do and match our lines on the way out. There we go. And we'll collect it together. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. Woohoo! Kicking up a little snow from the tail on the snowbank. And I'll see you in the next one. Somebody got a bit stuck. It happens. It's not ideal. Bit off a little more than he can chew. Be on the right tires.